Hello everybody, this is John from OneHourAcademy.com taking you through Lesson 4 in PowerPoint Slideshows. I hope you've learned a lot so far and I think to start this lesson you have to make sure that you've done Lessons 2 and 3 in particular. In the first lesson of those two we created our basic slideshow and got our templates going and uh, slide transitions and then we just finished up last time with some custom animations. So make sure you've got that done before you start this one because this lesson picks up where we left off with the custom animations. So I want to add a couple of more slides to my slideshow. Kinds of slides we haven't seen yet that are a little bit more advanced. What I want to do first is a chart type of slide and then I'm going to follow it up with a table type of slide. So if we go to, I'm going to close off the animation pane here, we don't need that right now. If we go back to the home menu where the home ribbon is, this is where you can find the new slide button. And in the previous lessons you've seen that when we go to select a new slide, I press and hold this button here. And that gives me a list of the different types of slides that are available. So for this particular one, actually for the next two, we're going to go with the title and content uh, template right here. So I'm going to pick this one. This is slide number four. Actually, it was meant to be four, but you see what happened there. It put it between slides one and three. So I can just drag it down here. Not a problem. I can rearrange it. So now it's slide four. So on this slide here, I'm going to talk about projected sales. And rather than put a bunch of bullet points down, I'm going to put a chart in here. So first we will put our title, projected sales in new regions. And I don't know if you remember, but my company is expanding into lots of other places around the world. So the next slide is going to talk about the sales in these six new markets that we're going to be expanding into. So if I come here, you'll notice again I've got the different types of slides that I can insert. This time I'm going to insert a chart. Now when I launch this, what happens is Microsoft Excel comes up, which is, as you probably know, another program that you get with Microsoft Office. It's the spreadsheet program. Now, if you want to learn more about Excel, here's my little plug for One Hour Academy. We have a wonderful Excel tutorial. I did it myself, so of course I'm going to say it's wonderful. And uh, I'd recommend if you don't know much about Excel that you take a look at that one as well. But you don't need to know a lot about Excel to be in PowerPoint making a chart. And I'll show you how easy this is. So I'm going to click on this chart button right now. And I can choose the kind of chart I want. And, you know, it's got a little menu here, and it's pretty self-explanatory, the different types of charts that are available, pie, line, column, and so on. To keep it simple, I'm going to stay on the first one. I'm going to go with this uh, option right here, the clustered cylinders, they call it. And I'm just going to click that and um, OK. So what you get is this Excel uh, screen that comes up over top of PowerPoint. But I really need to stretch this over so that you can see it at the same time as you see what's going on in PowerPoint. So look at that. It actually generated a chart for me already. But it's really important to relate what's going on over here with what you see over here. Now, this would be a good little chart for me, but what I want to do is change some of the things. So rather than four categories, I need six because I've got six cities that I'm expanding to. And rather than three series, I only need two because I'm comparing the next two years of sales we'll say 2014 and 2015 into the future. So to alter the number of things I'm reporting on in both directions, I can grab this little handle right here. Make sure you guys see that properly. So right here in the corner, if I put my mouse over it, I click and hold it down. I want one less series and two more categories. So we go like that. And let me try that again. Bring it over like that. So that's exactly what I need. So I'm going to quickly go in here and I'm going to replace these categories with the actual cities that I need. So let me just bring this back into full view and then we'll reveal it again at the end and you can see what it looks like. So the cities, if you remember that I'm expanding into, are Paris, Milan, New York. So you just go ahead and, you know, as you press enter, it just goes down to the next box in, in the in the spreadsheet here, or we call them cells in Excel. Madrid, Sydney, and Hong Kong. Okay, so those are the actual things that I'm charting. Rather than Series 1, Series 2, I'm going to replace it with 2014 and 2015. 
Okay, and these are sales in, in we'll say, millions of dollars. So I can just put two digits in here, and we're going to assume this is millions. In fact, we'll put it as the title of our slide so that people know. And of course, I'm just making these numbers up as we go along. I could only dream to have, you know, a company with six locations internationally that's got these wonderful sales in the millions of dollars. But it's always good to dream, right? So 28. What I'm trying to show is just some arbitrary sales figure and then some sign of growth in the following year. Of course, that's what people like to project when they do these kinds of things, right? They always want to be better in the years to come. So that is the data that I have produced for my chart. And it's going to ignore the Series 3 because I didn't have my box going around there. I brought it in and brought it down. So if I close this off now, I can just, just with the X up here, this will make Excel go away. But all this work is now put into my spreadsheet, or into my PowerPoint, rather. So look at that. That looks really good. And it even has a legend here for the two, uh, the two years. And the colors it chose are consistent with the colors of my theme. Pretty sweet. Um, I can animate that as well, just like I have uh, with everything else on my slideshow. So if you remember, under the animations tab, I can, you know, I can maybe have it fade in or something like that, so that it it kind of reveals itself dramatically. Not bad. Okay, we need one more slide. So I'm going to go back to the home menu, and I'm going to press down the new slide button, and I'm going to go with another one of these title and content slides because this slide is going to have a table on it. Okay, so now I'm on, on number six, and um, this time around, make sure I get the right slide here, um, I'm going to talk about uh, advertising budget locally. I hope I spelled that right. Yes, I did. Okay, and then again down here I can choose between the different types of slides. So this time we're going to try one of these. We haven't done one of these yet, so we're going to insert a table. Now a table is just a grid, basically, and it's going to ask me how many rows and how many columns I want. So I need, uh, let's see, three columns and five rows. Okay, so it comes up like that, and again it picks a nice colored theme consistent with the theme of my whole design of my slideshow presentation. Okay, so I'm just going to very quickly go in here and enter some information. Sales and total ad budget. Okay, so I think at this point what I'll do, well, let me just type in the first one of each of these. So New York, and their sales are 4.6. This is in millions of dollars, so probably I should put that up here too. Millions. And the ad budget, 98766. Not bad. Now you can tell I'm a pretty slow typist, and I don't want you to have to endure watching me do all of the typing on a video. So what I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to pause the video, I'm going to finish typing this out, and then you'll see it, and then you can pause it, and then get caught up to me, and then we'll finish off with the formatting. Okay, so hang on here for a second. I'm going to finish this off screen and then come back to you live. Just one second, please. Okay, so we're back, and this is my completed chart here. If you wanted to do the exact same chart as me, then you may want to pause it for a minute while I keep this zoomed in here for you, and you can finish off the uh, finer points of these numbers. But the numbers, of course, don't matter because, as I said many times, these are all made-up numbers, and I don't really have a company with these kinds of sales figures. Okay, but I wanted to join back in progress here because I wanted to just add a few more finishing touches to my table before we call it a lesson. So um, you can do things with these tables over here in the design and layout different options that we have. And we, we can spend a lot of time looking at these, but we'll just uh, take a look at a few in particular. I want to make my table a little bit bigger. So if I grab it by the, um, the middle here with my double arrow, I can drag it down like so, so that it's spread out a little bit more. Okay. Something else I can do is I can align all the text so that it's sort of vertically centered top to bottom. So I'm going to highlight all of these tables here, and I'm going to click on this guy right here, which means to center it in the middle of the box top to bottom. So it's a subtle thing, but it looks a little bit nicer. My sales in the middle, I'm going to center this information from left to right using the horizontal centering tool up here. And maybe I will shrink this down a little bit so that it's not quite as spread out. So I can adjust the column. Let's see how I did that with my mouse. I put it in between, and I get this two-way arrow, and then I can use that to drag my uh, columns left or right. And then with my mouse being a four-way arrow, I can just put it somewhere 
in the middle a little bit more so that it looks like it's centered a little bit better, just like so. Okay, and then again, I've got a new slide. I've got some new objects here. I can go to my animation pane one more time, and maybe I'll do a float in on this table, just like that. Okay, so we've just added a couple of more slides here, and this gives you a little bit more features on your slideshow. Um, I think the last thing to do is we'll look at this one more time by going to the slideshow pane, and we'll run it from the beginning. But again, I'm going to have to pause my show and then come back to your full screen so you can see what the finished product looks like. So hold on for that, and we'll be right back with that in just a moment. So here's our slideshow starting from the third slide. We um, fast forwarded, so there's the second slide, third slide. And I just wanted to show you the final two slides that we worked on in this lesson. So here is the projected sales in the new region and the nice chart that we made comparing the sales from the two years and the five or six new locations we're going to. And we wrap it up with a table that shows you a breakdown of the budget locally across different markets in the US. So that's it for this lesson. We've got uh, one, maybe two lessons left where I still want to talk about one other type of, of slide that uses a thing called smart graphics or smart art graphics. So I hope you enjoyed this one. This is John from One Hour Academy and hope to see you in the next lesson. Bye for now.